everybody quest wise here and we have played our second session of castles and crusades uh, this is my sort of ongoing short video series about the campaign that i'm running for castles and crusades if you want to see some of my reviews on that uh, go back in the in the, uh, the you know the, the the catalog of videos and you can see my sort of thoughts on this game and why i've gotten into it as late as i did and it still pains me to think that I put it off for as long as I did because this is really, really, really one of my favorite games and going to be for a very long time a go-to game um, uh, for me to bring to a table, uh, to, at least to run. I, I've actually never played in the game of Castles and Crusades. I hope to remedy that in the future. I hope to actually bring this to more than just my local table, but maybe to some online games as well as uh, some conventions and stuff as well too. Uh, I'm a very um, big supporter of this company and this game, and I really want to share it with other people uh, as well. But we've run our second session, and it was a little bit longer this time. We were actually able to uh, invest a little bit more time. The players have started to evolve the story a little bit more. They've learned a little bit more about what's going on, what I've concocted. Um, what I'm doing with this game is I'm using the Codex Germania, or Germania, and we're setting it in a sort of semi-historical slash uh, mythological setting. Uh, they have uh, all begun in the town or, of Blueholm, and that, of course, is an homage to uh, the Holmes D&D uh, Blue Book. Um, and uh, last time you'll remember, we talked about uh, they found a young boy who was very, very sick, and they had determined that the well uh, in this town had been poisoned uh, by something that they couldn't identify. And so in this session, what they did is they, um, they talked to the Burgermeister of the town and to the healer, uh, Olga, and they've decided that they needed to go north to Frosthold, where the Thane lives, in order to get more information because they were told that he has healers there that might be able to help. The players played this out very, very well. They made their trek north to Frosthold. They uh, were given an audience with the Thane, uh, uh, Hrothgar, and they played it out very, very keenly. And, and, and I have a really great group of players for this for this campaign, and they were very cautious on how, what they revealed to the Thane and and to what they talked about with him until they were absolutely sure that they could trust him. And I think there's still a little, trepida a little bit of trepidation there that I don't think that they fully trust this guy yet um, because he also has an advisor with him who is from a southern kingdom I'm calling the August Empire, which is sort of the uh, after the fall of Rome, that sort of the remnants of what was left over from the, that great empire. Uh, he has a, the Thane has an emissary there from there from that empire, um, and they don't really know much about him. There's only one character who had any knowledge of that empire, and and they're a little bit wary of why he's there. and And I love that fact. I love that they're they're sort of feeding into the paranoia of what's what's going to happen. They were told that there were some omens that were foretold, uh, or, or 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 gleaned. Um, by this emissary that um, a darkness was coming and that it was going to spread this infection across the land uh, but they didn't know what the darkness was it was from beyond the mountains to the west um, and so that's kind of where we left the cam uh, the the campaign as it were in the end of that session uh, having talked to him and learning about this sort of thing that's coming and it's sapping the strength and the uh, warmth from the land uh, they also discovered that while it was supposed to be seasonally, it was supposed to be towards the end of, uh, of winter, beginning of fall, um, that it's been extremely, extremely cold, and the cold is in actually increasing a bit, and it's sapping the sort of warmth from the land and the life from the land itself. Uh, so next session, we'll probably go into a little bit further into depth of discussions about what might happen next, and hopefully they'll plan ahead and think about things like uh, where to go from here. Uh, I'm going to drop a bunch of um, uh, sort of adventure seeds and ideas on them and see which one that they grab a hold of and we'll run from there. One of the things I'm doing with this game is that the way that I love to run games is to set up a scenario 
and then see where the players take it. It's my favorite way to run a game. Now, that doesn't apply to everybody. There's lots of other ways out there to play role-playing games. Some people like to take a, a published adventure and run it verbatim. For me, I don't like to do that very much. I like to sort of set up a scenario, grab an idea from somewhere, or create one myself. Um, and then the idea that I had that this, this, this well would be tainted, and it would be poisoned, and these people were going to be sick, and more and more of them have started to fall ill, um, and they're looking for ways to sort of um, to, to fix this as well as heal these people. And, uh, and I let it run from there. I let them sort of choose in what direction they want to go. And I feed upon their actions. So as they begin to discuss things, I, you know, I sit and I listen. The way they interact with NPCs and stuff, I try to take note of that. And I build the adventure upon those ideas. It's a very improv way of running a game. Uh, but for me, it works very, very well. And it does take a lot of practice to get to that point. I think a lot of reading, a lot of playing, a lot of running uh, games in order to get to the point where um, uh, you know it, you feel comfortable with sort of running a game in that way. Uh, but that's that's a little bit of recap about session two. Um, session three will be coming up next week on Sunday. We did have to skip a week, uh, so we're going to do two weeks back to back and um, further the storyline from there. And we'll we'll be back here, and I will share uh, some more insights into uh, session number three. Until next time, I am Questwise, and I am out.